Are you moving to Thailand? Here's 10 tips on things that may be different between Thailand and your home country. Hi, I'm Joe Remax and I'm coming to you from my office here in Bangkok, Thailand. Today we're going to cover 10 tips to help you move to Thailand. Things that you may not know and may be a little bit different than your home country. So let's get into it. Number one, lease terms. The standard lease term in Thailand is one year lease, two months deposit and the first month paid in advance. And I know there's a lot of talk on the internet and what's legal, what's illegal. I'm just telling you what the standard is. If you're prepared, you have a lot more to choose from than if you come insisting upon your rights uh, to pay only one month deposit, for example. Up to you. Uh, but if you have that extra money in your pocket, you come prepared, you'll have a lot more choice of where you want to live. Number two, many places that rent out are furnished. So that means they're going to come with major appliances, sofa, table, chairs, um, a refrigerator, beds. Equipment will vary a little bit, like uh, do they have dishes, pots and pans? That you may have to buy. Bed sheets you usually have to supply for yourself, but can be give and take a little bit. But you don't need to come with a load of furniture, nor do you need to purchase a load of furniture. While we're talking about furniture, let's talk about number three, beds. The mattresses here can be very hard if you like a soft mattress. That's something I found. I like a softer mattress. Some mattresses, depending where you go, are really hard. And I say hard, it's like lying on cement. I would suggest if you have a chance, do take a lie down on, on the mattress and see that it suits your preference. Sometimes you can even negotiate swapping out mattresses when you rent, but you may have difficulty to negotiate that after the fact. So great thing to do while you're viewing apartments, take a little lay down on the bed, make sure you like that mattress. Number four, hot water is not in every faucet. We may be used to central hot water heating. Every time you open a tap, hot water comes out. That is not the case here. Uh, most faucets are heated by, by little square water heaters that are mounted on the wall. You can usually see them. So keep an eye open. Most showers are hot water. But when you get into like the basin in the bathroom or your kitchen sink, those often don't have hot water. So if you're looking for hot water, do check it out. Do check that you have it where you want it. And you can usually tell, open the cupboard underneath the kitchen sink. If you see a little square box, then it's likely heated. Don't be fooled by this faucet. Sometimes they install dual faucets with only one cold water piped into it. Be, be aware, do check if that's something you want. Like we like to have in our house, hot water for washing up our dishes. Number five, most places in Thailand, especially in the city are not pet friendly. You're talking about condos, apartments, they don't accept pets. Do be forward when you're looking for a place. If you, if you have a pet, if you're planning to get a pet, talk to the landlord, talk to the office, talk to your agent, make sure that you don't show up to move in with your kitty cat under your arm and get turned away. Pet friendly, don't assume it, verify before you choose a place and sign a lease. Electrical system is number six. We run off 220 volts here. If you're bringing any electronics with you, do make sure that they support 220 volts. Uh, the plugs here support two peg round plugs and the slots. Uh, UK plugs are not highly supported. However, if you buy power bars, many of them are compatible with UK as well. So you can use a power bar to adapt to UK stuff. But be careful, any electronics that you bring that run on 110, they will, of course, be overloaded if you plug them into the wall on a 220 system. Number seven, it may be obvious for some, but maybe not to everyone, it's never cold here. So you don't need a whole winter wardrobe. Don't pack your snow boots. I do suggest that if you're adventuring, you're going up north to Chiang Mai, to the mountains. Yes, in the wintertime, it can get cool. You do want a jacket, but that's about it. You don't need a, a ton of winter wardrobe. Leave that at home. Number eight, bringing your own vehicle. I would highly recommend against it. The import 
duties are so high here that you're going to end up paying an arm and a leg to import your vehicle two to three times its original cost so it just is prohibitive don't do that and to buy a vehicle here is fairly expensive as well depending where you're coming from you may find it very expensive maybe places in Europe you may be used to these prices if you're coming from North America you may be shocked number nine local versus imported like many countries local produce tends to be cheaper but it's a lot cheaper than imported luxury goods and products when i first came to asia i thought that the proximity to korea and japan all of the electronics would be cheap they're not they're expensive any kind of luxury good uh, be it a luxury car handbags high-end electronics they can be almost twice what you will pay elsewhere so bring your Louis Vuitton with you ladies and gentlemen buy your electronics before you come what you get here you can get good electronics here but you tend to pay a premium and you sometimes get a lower spec than you would for your buck somewhere else buy your laptop and buy your camera before you come you probably do better off than trying to buy it while you're here and last but not least number 10 education the government schools here are free however they are quite bad I, Thai schools public schools rank 74th out of 100 uh, by the EF education first a Switzerland company education system if you have kids and you plan to put them in public school first they'll have to read and write Thai which may be uh, a barrier if they're already in the education system number two the education system is fairly basic here what you have is a choice of using international schools private schools they call them international schools they can be quite expensive expect and budget somewhere between 20 to 35,000 US a year per student to attend an international school of a high caliber there are some kind of mid-tier international schools where you can cut that number in in half and maybe even less depending what you want for your kids so do research schools research what your budgets you need so I hope these 10 tips are something that help you out remember like subscribe and share my videos with friends and family to help this channel move ahead if you have any questions my contact number and information is below in the description feel free to reach out to me I'm happy to answer any questions you may have leave a comment below ask your question you got a question ask it I'll be happy to respond thank you for listening I'm Joe Remax and I'll see you in the next video